commitment. Of course, how many institutions have a thing like the Rivera Mural? We have a lot of responsibility here. If you have a world-class piece of art, you've got to take care of it. People want you. People don't want you to treat it, you know, in a less than professional way. The, what the interface looks like, you're going to see some real great animation in there. As you come in and Patlique, the statue turns into Patlique for the painting, and you go into a theater stage, and these windows, these shades open up, and you can open it up and go into the bureau, and so all of the directions and ramifications and story notes that we have. One of the things that Rivera uh, believed in when he created this mural, and if you take a look at the mural and you listen to Masha, she'll probably be talking about the combination of using the, the techniques and the tools and the ideas of the ancient peoples and the older ways of doing things in, in a contemporary manner and creating new art forms and new ideas using both the new and the old information. And this is what, in a sense, is one of the goals of our project. When I first saw it, my immediate reaction was to step back. It was so huge and vibrant and powerful and complex. It was of the college, it was rooted in the college's history, but it was bigger than the college at the same time. So I felt one way to tackle the problem of its future, not immediately, necessarily, but for the long term, for the next century or so, was to try to accumulate a group of people who had ties to it, immediate specific ties to this piece of art, or to this community, or to that artist, but who brought a wealth of experience from a much larger context, a much larger arena. And this formed the basis also for the website. You can click in and zoom in and see the details. And we're getting into the minutia till it's it's uh, well. It's not boring. <laughs> it's not boring. There, there's so so many things happening in that, and that's where the wealth of, of information that you can uh, disseminate to the students. It's really a great metaphor for history. This poster kind of speaks really well to what the chancellor was talking about this morning. This <clears throat> level of excellence. Everything about this project has been done first rate. You know, when this stuff goes out into the world, people are going to think good things about City College. We've received anywhere from $100 to $600 for the use of the mural. I think we all agree that if somebody wants to use the image for an educational purpose or they're a nonprofit, I just had a call today from somebody who's writing an article for an art magazine published in India who oh, wants the image of the mural. So the muralist movement came out of this. Uh, all of this turmoil and chaos in Mexico, and its uh, purpose was to, to communicate ideas to people, particularly for the Mexican. The traditional mural has gone way back to Bonapac and other parts of, of Mexico and in the Colombian uh, uh, civilizations that were you know, 3,000 years old or so. I mean, it was long, well established, even though Diego studied in Europe and sort of brings about a, a casamiento, a marriage of. Italian and other kinds of uh, muralist art combining with uh, that which was more indigenous to Mexico and the indigenous population. I'm proposing for the next semester, and I'm a member of the mural committee, is to create a class in Latin American studies that will bring together different elements, different fields of study as a way to look at issues in Latin America, issues in relations between the United States and Latin America, uh, issues in understanding cultures and diversity, etc., and using the mural as a focus, a way of looking at these issues, very concrete visual representation of these things, and provide students a way to, to dip into these different ways of looking at of social relations, of looking at politics, a ways of understanding culture. We saw what Diego Rivera did in 1939, 1940, after the completion of the two bridges in, in San Francisco, and after you know, when the war was going on, his mural reflects all of these things from the perspective of someone in San Francisco on Treasure Island in 1939, 1940. What would you do if, we were, if you were painting a mural in 1995, looking back 50 years to the beginning of the United Nations, what would you paint? What would be in your mural showing our concerns in 1995, but also what's been happening for the past 50 years? The reason we have it is it's a very interesting uh, subject here, and I'll just be very brief with it. If 
probably heard the name Timothy Pfluger. He was really the master architect of our first few buildings here on campus, the Science Building, uh, the two gymnasia. He had great plans for a much bigger campus. He began in 1940 with this, what used to be the county jail here. And some of our students, I guess, feel that it's keeping with where they did. But it's really six acres over hills. And he had in mind to do these sort of almost Aztec-like developments over a period of time. Well, two factors interfered. First, the war came along, and he couldn't uh, continue with the work. And secondly, he died very unexpectedly in 1946. So those three buildings that he designed are interesting, not only for their design, but the fact that he welcomed, welcomed art as well as the architect who he was working on. And this World's Fair that we'll be hearing about is a place where he actually meant to gather artists and then bring their art over here for permanent installation on campus. The key to this mural is to look for balances, and there are things we have discovered just in the last year or so, that after the 30 or so years I've used this as a teaching device, I, I wasn't aware of. But it's a fascinating work, and I was just sitting listening to all of the technology described to me. I'm wondering if we're going to make it too easy for our students, you know, they can just click and do something that it took us years to discover, but why not? They can go on from there. Thank you.